Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome back to my channel. My name's Mayuko and today we're gonna be talking about how to start coding. This is probably by far the most common question that I get, so I'm excited to dive into this today. So my secret code, oh, get it, code? Cause we're talking about code? On how to start coding is to just do it. And by that, I really mean build something for yourself with code and don't focus too much on specific technologies. Now I know it sounds a little bit too simple or too easy to give that piece of advice, but I really think it's true. Coding is a skill, just like everything else. So in order to obtain and master a skill, you have to do it a lot. Malcolm Gladwell famously popularized that it takes about 10,000 hours to master a skill. And while I'm not telling anybody to spend 10,000 hours on anything, I think the essence of it is true that you have to spend a lot of time doing it. Because practice makes perfect, right? Oh no, that is not the case, and my high school orchestra teacher would tell you that. It's perfect practice makes perfect. What she meant by that is that it's not quantity, but quality that ultimately makes a huge difference in how skilled you'll be at that thing. Take it from a high school orchestra teacher because violin is one heck of a hard instrument to learn. <laughs> so you could spend 10,000 hours doing every tutorial out there on JavaScript, and you could spend 10,000 hours doing problems on leak code, but that's not going to get you where you wanna be, nor is it a great place to start. Because learning technology for the sake of learning technology is a tough road to walk down, especially for beginners. For one thing, you could get stuck in tutorial land. And by that, I mean you're completely relying on tutorials for learning new tech. There definitely is a place for tutorials. I'm not trying to undermine them. They're usually a great way to get your feet wet in new technology. The best is when you can take things from a tutorial and apply them to your own stuff. Without that crucial connection, those newfound skills aren't flexed and therefore not retained, and you just did a tutorial just to do one. So you'll be stuck in tutorial land. But the other thing is that it's really hard to stay motivated when you're learning a new technology just to learn it. Honestly, this is really just a personal opinion, but I don't think that technical documentation is necessarily the most spiciest, most dramatic, and most invigorating thing that I've ever read. Quite frankly, it's boring and it's supposed to be. The whole point of it is that it's informational, but if you're not using any of the information, then why put yourself through that? Anyway, I digress, that's just my own opinion. And the last reason for why it's difficult to learn tech just for the sake of it is because that's not why it exists. Tech helps solve problems that we have and provides new solutions. And the best way to learn how to code is to do just that, learn by doing and build something cool for yourself. I do want to point out though that technology-based learning is different from developing your coding foundations. Learning the fundamentals of coding allow you to gain a certain level of fluency so that you can build whatever you want and learn what you need to to build the thing. And I'm talking about like real basics here, like when you're learning the English language, you have to learn the alphabet first before you can move on to any words. What I recommend is to first learn how to think logically, followed by data structures and basic algorithms, all of which are offered on brilliant.org, who is the sponsor of this video. They're a website that has a bunch of courses on the sciences. All of the courses have beautiful illustrations and are all interactive, which as a visual learner, I really appreciate. What I love about the Brilliant courses is that they're all easy to understand and they all teach you how to think. Honestly, I wish a lot of my undergrad CS classes taught all of this stuff as well as they do. So go to brilliant.org slash Mayuko to sign up for free. And the first 200 people get 20% off of the annual premium subscription. The link is also in the description box down below and brilliant.org, thank you for sponsoring. So when it comes to learning how to code, build something for yourself, a website, an app, what have you, that you would actually use. For example, a shopping list app that helps you track all the things that you have to buy. Another example, a desktop app that helps you track your ranking within a game so you can see whether you're improving or not. Or my last example, a website that tells you if Mercury's in retrograde. 
This whole method is actually called project-based learning, which is a term that a lot of academics in education use to describe the method of learning something through solving a real-world problem. And through research in the last 20 years, it's proven to be a great way to learn, especially in computer science and software engineering. And this is for a couple of reasons. The first is that working on projects is inherently more motivating than learning theoretical concepts on their own. The second is that you tend to learn more than one skill because you're solving a problem from end to end. And the last is that it enhances collaboration and communication skills because you're most likely going to be working on that project with someone else or at least asking for help. So hopefully by now you understand the value of project-based learning as a way to how to start coding and I have a couple of tips for you before you all embark on your coding journeys. The first is to keep the project very very small. And this is because if you commit to a very large project that takes a lot of time, that requires lots of new skills, it's really easy to lose motivation and lose sight of why you're doing this in the first place. So start with like the smallest possible chunk of the thing that you can make. You can always build on top of this and just having small goals means that they're way more achievable and it'll be more fun. The second is to build something again for yourself or for someone that you know. This part's actually really important because it ties into the motivation piece, but building something for you or for someone else means that you're actually gonna care about this thing. Also by knowing your needs or your friend's needs really well, you're going to be able to make decisions way quicker and not get blocked and stay motivated. And the last piece of advice is to work on it with other people. If you can work on the project itself with another person, that's great. Two heads are better than one. If one of you gets blocked, you can help unblock each other and help solve those problems together. Also learning is more fun with friends. And maybe you wanna fly solo, but find someone who can at least hold you accountable for what you're gonna make. So ask your friend to check in like once a week on how things are going because that accountability can serve as a really good motivator. And these are all of the reasons why I think building something is the best way to get started on coding. Anyway, I hope you like this video. Actually, my husband Scott and I have been working on a coding event for the month of May, where we are going to bring together a community of people who are all going to work on our personal projects together. This is not really like a hackathon. It's really not intense at all. It is just for fun and just for working on it with other people, with the support of others and stuff. It's gonna be a fun time. There's details in the description box down below and pin as a comment. And don't forget to hit subscribe. I'm making a lot more videos now, so you don't wanna miss out on those, so hit the subscribe button. And I will see you all next time. Hope you have a great day wherever you are. Bye.